And now we'll sing the Gloria. Uh, that is triple in its idea. In the first part of the Gloria, you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the second half, as it was in the beginning, thousands of years ago, is now, at this very moment, and ever shall be world without end, perhaps millions of years ahead. Well, now, with that grand idea in mind, sing... Tell me when you were appointed uh, director of music at the Temple Church. In 1923, a long time ago. And uh, then you were following who? Sir Walter Davies, who had been here for 23 years. And uh, he was appointed director of music to the Universities of Wales and to the National Council of Music in Wales. A bit of musical history. I don't know why I say that, but I, I, I just feel that. Well... I mean, it's an, it's an era which won't mm. be repeated, probably. Mm. I mean, can you really say that... Are you a, uh, you're uh, not a trainee of Walford's, are you, or are you, really? Are no, you? I'm not. You're not. No, I'm not. Is I was at the Royal College, I, at the Royal Co and uh, Walford Davies used to take the choir training class. Yeah. I was a very cheeky young, youngster, and uh, I came here... The organ, by the way, was very sharp, the old organ, yes. almost a semitone. Yeah. So when we did Vosi's Clementium of Parry... I played it in, it's in G major, I played it in G, and Perry was in the round church listening to the performance. And the, here, there's a Dr. Damon, who was a great friend of his, and they used to come together. Dr. Damon came up, and Sir Hubert came, uh, and, 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 and uh, so Dr. Damon said, uh, we, we were very worried all the way through, were you transposing it <laughs> up a semitone? <laughs> and no, it was in a G major. Well, it was so sharp. Yes. They both got pitch. Yes. And it was up. The following year, I played it a semitone down. And uh, I remember saying to uh, Dr. Damon, what about the key that worry you? No, what's the matter with the key? I said, I played it a semitone. No, oh, no, it's G major as far as we're concerned. You know? Well, everything had to go down. Simply because tenors, it was the top A's of B flats and alto parts. Well, so you became Matthew, pa it. Matthew Passion, every, right. everything, Paris, Joe, Brahms, Requiem, everything went, always went down. Now, what happened? <laughs> and I said, I was a cheeky youngster. I remember coming hearing Brahms here, the Requiem, as a cantata. Walter Davis transposing the whole thing down the semitone. Well, at the choir training glass, he suddenly turned me, said, they, they were doing How Lovely Brahms, it was seen, he turned me. He said, Mr. Ball, will you play the organ, please? And I went up to the organ and, and <laughs> put it down as a tone, you see. <laughs> and he didn't say a word until the very end. And why, pray, must we have it in another key, uh, key other than what Brahms wrote it in? You see? Why do we do that? I said, for the same reason, Doctor, that you do it at the temple. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I, I think it bore some fruit eventually. <laughs> and because uh, what was difficult, I still don't know how it went. I was at Paddington Parish Church, a fine St. of Sussex Gardens. Uh, beautiful church, a whacking great full man of organ. And uh, during the morning service, a man came up to the organ during the lesson, one of the lessons, Will you play at the temple this afternoon? Sir Walford Davis has been taken ill. It's Cantata Sunday. The Cantata is the Mass in B minor bar, <laughs> beginning with claw, ho, ho, da, 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 the whole of the Gloria section, you see, right the way through. Gloria, um, all, all the arias, and, and, yes, and all that, right through, ending up with Sanctus, ten sections. Sir Walford has left a full score on the organ for you. We usually do it down a semitone. Well, I rushed off. We had a, a, a church what warm. What time was this? Uh, uh, first lesson, I think, in the uh, morning uh, at Paddington. Class of 11 or something? Yes. Oh, well, half past 11, something like that. Anyway, the church warden played the organ, and asked them to play the hymn, final hymn and everything, uh, and I rushed here. I didn't have a full score. I didn't dare play it from full score, but I did play it from a vocal copy and down the semitone. I don't know how the... 
I knew it well enough to try this and that and so on, and, and, and worked right the way through. Whatever time I got here, what, uh, 12 o'clock or 10 to 12, I didn't have no lunch. I went right right through 3 o'clock, hard practicing this thing. But evidently there, were no, there was no, no disaster. Uh, <laughs> I can't imagine how it went. But at the same time, it, it did. <laughs> And I think it was something to do with that that I was appointed here. I don't know. When was that? When, when did you do this deputy work? When did you come and do this? Oh, I was about, uh, about 1920, something like that. So, in fact, you knew people like yeah. Stanford, did you? you no, know, like people of Stanford's for composition. Really? Mm. He didn't altogether like me, but still, I, 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 I was people of Stanford's. I was people of Bridge for harmony and counterpoint. I was a people of Parry for composition. His last pupil, actually, but uh, that was only accidental, because I, as I went to the Royal College when I was thirteen. I got a, a piano scholarship. You're, 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 you're not. Um, you came from Aus Australia. Australia, yeah, but I'm not Australian. No, my not. parents went it's, out it's there. Said that you're Australian. Oh uh, well, yes, no, but my parents went out to Australia, and they, just soon after they arrived, uh, I arrived, <laughs> and I that's what happened. I'm not really Australian. And you came to England to go to. No, I came, I came to England, uh, I think, when I was five or something oh, like that. Oh, I see, that. they came back to England. Yes, they yes, came yes, back yes, to England. Yes. Yeah, so you and, lived in... Uh, and then I lived in Muswell Hill, where there was oh, a yes. very jolly fine organist called G.D. Cunningham. Oh, yes. And there was August Alexander Palace and James's Muswell Hill. He's a, yes. he a jolly fine... Well, I became a pupil of his. Yeah. Through being with him, I got a scholarship at the Royal College. Yes. And I was 13, very, very young. But anyway, I wrote an overture for orchestra, this... Orchestra and, and had the cheek to show it to Parry, and, uh, who was director. And Parry said, oh, come along at four o'clock this afternoon or something. And he gave me lessons for about two months, and then yes, he didn't give lessons at all. I mean, I was a... Uh, he just did this. And then put me under Stanford. That's how I, be that's how I became a pupil of Stanford's. Mm. You can you can never tell us the right speed for such things as Stanford in C and Stanford. Oh, I see. <laughs> this is well, always well, being argued well, about. Well, it's nothing position. these days are played at the same speed they used to be. It's a lot of it's all much faster, isn't it? So what's some faster now? Mm. Mm. I mean that days. that that anthem the dum dum da da the um, spend the day. Yes, I think yes. it's much slower, really. I don't know what the moment. Yeah. But I think the the pace and of course with a small choir, I mean, it's perhaps it's rather faster. But if we have a big choral site here, yes. but anyway. Do you play Stanford's organ music? I mean, do you? Mm. Mm. Occasionally. I think uh, he wrote these most beautiful uh, miniatures. Yes. Didn't yes. He, really? Those, I mean, those at, at, at Birmingham, they, they get all sorts of things, most modern and, and uh, ancient. And so, so on. who else were you at the RCM with? I mean, was there any other? Patrick uh, Hadley, were you there in that time? Yes. I said Hadley was a student. Was Howell a student? Yes. He, yes. He was uh, he, just before me. He was people of Stanford's. Stanford used to give him all the lessons and not me, because I was a little rude to him, I think. I was something <laughs> you know, forgave me. And then this job came up and was advertised, was it, or what? Or did oh, they no. come and offer it to you? Or? No, and they used to have senior students at the Royal College, and I, I became a senior student and uh, was a judge of the Middle Temple called Muir Mackenzie. He was on the college corporation. And uh, when I heard that Walford Davis was asked to go to Wales as a suitable man to develop music. He became, he became uh, chairman of the National Council of Music of Wales. did an awful lot for Welsh music, actually. He's, he couldn't do the temple here and Wales and uh, decided to leave here. And, and, well, they said he was a Welshman. He ought to be doing this, ought to do that job. And Muir Mackenzie put my name down. And uh, it's a curious, I think it's a very curious story. There was another organist, I won't mention his name, whom I followed at Paddington. Mm. He must have put a good word in for me, otherwise I wouldn't have got Paddington. Mm. And he was an assistant here. And the other assistants were William Harris and Henry Lee, assistants to Walford. Gosh. Here, and this other one. Well, my name was put down. I didn't apply, and Muir Mackenzie put my name down. And uh, this person heard that my name is down. And what are you doing? Uh, uh, I hear you. I said I haven't put my name down now. 
And we were all asked to pay a Sunday service and take a Friday practice. And then sort of the competition. Well, I was asked to do that, and I told my vicar, no, I'm not going to do it. I said, anyway, it's Walter Davis's choir. If he wants to come and hear what our choir is like, come to Paddington, hear the choir there, and hear the organ there. It's not the same thing to come and hear another choir here. Oh, well, Vicar said, I think you ought to uh, do it and have this. I said, no, nope, nothing in the world will make me. And uh, all the other, the other people did their week and everything. Then I had a letter from the bench to say, will I do mine? I wrote a nice letter back, I much regret that I couldn't do so. <laughs> Uh, hoping, in a, in a sense, that it would end the whole thing, but it didn't. And as I was told after, did the other thing. They okay. liked it. Okay. And, uh, and then, when I was offered the, the appointment, I wrote and refused it. Because I thought that this other friend had done me a jolly good turn to to Paddington. I'm not going to compete with him. Mm. As he was already also an assistant here. Yeah. And Walford Davies, he was one of the persons that Walford Davies recommended. And I was an outsider. Yeah. And I, I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to be a jolly bad turn to do, go and compete against this man anyway. I'm not going to. Anyway, in the end, they said, we're going to offer it to you. And if you don't take it, none of the other candidates are going to be offered. I've forgotten the name of the man. We're having an American.
Now, this is obviously the period of when electrical recordings were being introduced, and as far as we know, you, you were one of the first people to make an electrical recording at an outside location, or at least one of the first people to make an electrical recording of church music. Now, was this, in fact, the first record you made, the most famous one of all? In a way, yes. It was a curious thing that um, the record Hear My Prayer should have been sung. In those days, the Temple Church, which is, by the way, a royal peculiar and a royal chapel, they liked everything in the Temple to be, in a sense, private. And they weren't altogether happy about having recordings made. But one Sunday, the anthem happened to be Hear My Prayer of Mendelssohn. And uh, one of the judges after came up to me and said he enjoyed the anthem very, very much. It's a pity that the whole of that has disappeared and we shall never hear it again. So I said, but why not? We could make a gramophone record of it and then you could hear it again. And that was how the choir committee passed the idea that a gramophone record should be made of Mendelssohn's Hear My Prayer. See, and that's uh, why it was chosen. And, and as we, we're sitting here, in fact, in the Temple Church, talking about this, can you cast your mind back to that night when you made the record and remember anything about it at all? Because recording techniques in those days were very different from those we're used to now, aren't they? Yes. In a way, they're, they're very much easier in those days because, whereas now, a record has to be made, uh, what, of uh, 50 minutes, is it? 50, 50 minutes, minutes playing yes, time. Yes, yes. Then... A whole evening could be devoted to a record of six minutes. But, of course, there was none of the editing that we could do nowadays, was there? I mean, was this a straight-through performance by yes. Ernest Love? Yes, yes. If something went wrong, well, then you had to do the whole thing again. I suppose you can't remember how many times you did that. No, it wasn't very many. It wasn't more, I suppose, more than three times. First of all, there would be a trial, a run-through, as it were, for timing... Mm. And then there would be another run-through with the idea of improving something or putting the choir in a different position and so on. And I think the third time was, the, was it. And did you play for this record yourself? Yes, you... yes. So it was done, really, without a conductor? Without a conductor, as, in fact, we do everything uh, in some ways. I'm not sure it's altogether a good plan, but I everything don't... is done without a conductor. Well, uh, having been here this mm. afternoon and seen the Temple Choir at work, it's, it amazes me how, how well they sing together. But I believe Ernest Luff sang in the choir um, as a man, didn't he? Yes. For some years. For a, very, uh, yes, a great number of years. And had some sons in the choir, is that right? Uh, two sons in the choir. In fact, is it true that people still write to him thinking that he's a little <laughs> boy? Or is this just a story? Oh, no. They, they, they send him toys at Christmas <laughs> and... Uh, a box of chocolates, which he's very pleased with. When he, when he gets chocolates, he, could, he used to give them to all the, other, all the boys in the choir, the present boys. So they used to enjoy his presence.
And I, I obviously can't let this chance of talking to you pass without asking you uh, whether you remember anything of what the critics said at that time. Um, because I read somewhere in a book that the gramophone gave your record a very cool reception. Well, at one time they said it couldn't be done. That boys' voices didn't record well, and they, um, whatever recordings they had done prior to the Luff recording hadn't been altogether successful. But anyway, this happened to uh, be more, more or less, I suppose, a success, and it was issued. And then followed a, a sort of chain of records, as far as I remember, because I've seen other 78 records in the yes. choir. There's one interesting thing, that at the, I think, the second recording, we had about an hour to spare in time, and the gramophone company wanted another record. Could Ernest, Ernest Luff, that is, could he sing something else? I said, well, give me a quarter of an hour. And in that quarter of an hour, we rehearsed Hear Ye Israel. Yes. yes. And in, within 20 minutes, had not only learnt the notes, but recorded it as well. What about the sales of Hear My Prayer? Do you know anything about those? Well, they, of course, passed the million mark many years ago. So somebody's had a gold disc. I've something. got a gold disc, and Ernest Love has a gold disc. Isn't that marvellous? Oh. And you, um, after a sort of gap, really, you have made records in the modern technique, haven't you, the LP records? The yes, we, LP we records. did some about, about eight years ago now. Yes, because the choir was uh, refounded, I believe, after the war, was yes, it right? Yes, we began from the beginning with no choir, no boys, no men, all no, no music, all music burnt, and uh, we started off with a, a service, learning a very easy service, smart in G, <laughs> yes. and uh, 
14 boys came and uh, began from scratch. But no again. building, or was there a building? Oh, the building was there, so the building, except uh, there was the, the round church at the back had been uh, burnt. Yes. But uh, there was the, what is called the choir was intact, and we, we carried on the services for some long time. And a few years after you started, then you started recording for HMV again? Yes, yes. And you did how many records? For them? Oh, I can't... I can't really remember. I should think half a dozen. Yes, not, so not, sort of not, music for services and, yes, uh, and yes, some lovely hymn records that I remember. Not, not many. And nothing in recent years? No. And it's always been one of my regrets that we've never got you to record, I say we, uh, the Grandfather <coughs> Company's never got you to record on the organ. Have you ever done an organ in, uh, in the temple? No. Well, except the, uh, there are, I think, two items on, on a temple record. Yes. Yes. Apart from that, no. is this by design of yours? Um, partly, but uh, I, I, I may uh, do something perhaps in the near future. It, it hardly seems possible. It's forty-five years ago. We're sitting in this church, and forty-five years ago that you made your first recording mm. here. Records have come a long way since then, um, it, particularly in technical, uh, in the sound of things. If you had a choice of making the record now, or making a record in those days, you say that you would probably have preferred the earlier days because of the time factor. You could have a whole evening to make one record. Yes, certainly, that's and true. Do you think it's also true that modern records aren't necessarily real performances, or have you no strong views on that? Uh, well, no, I, 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 don't, I, I couldn't um, give an opinion on, uh, about that. I've been told, so, I mean, if something goes wrong, you can... Uh, just re-record the, um, the few bars that have been wrong and, and it can be inserted, which, of course, in the old days you couldn't do it. You'd do the whole thing right through again. Yes. The, the quality, actually, Hear My Prayer, I believe, is still selling, but it's not the same as the original. They've taken away the high frequencies, in other words, the scratch yes. of the record, Yes. which has taken away the edge of the voice, of the quality of the voice, and the voice is softer than it used to be and hasn't got that sort of cello effect, the cello sound that it had. It's more, more fluty. It's not, yes. not nearly so good as the original record. Yes, and because the original record stopped, I suppose, did it? Yes. Halfway through, did yes. you have to stop the piece and contrive a stop in it? In um, it? Or was it a no. natural break? No, the, uh, the original record, it was recorded, re-recorded, three times... Somebody said oh, it couldn't be done again, but it was done and then recorded again in six months, after six months, and then again after another six months. And it's very difficult to tell uh, which record is which, except the last one is rather slower than the first one. And it's not quite the same edge, it's quite the same brilliance in the, in the voice. It's a slightly, slightly fuller tone. Otherwise, I, th I still think the original record is the best. And uh, Ernest Luff was how old when he sang this? Fifteen. Fifteen. In these days, of course, boys' voices... That's the real trouble with um, boys' voices breaking, as we find them breaking at 12 and 13, but, but we very rarely get a 15, 16, and that sort of thing. At one time, one of the tenors in the choir, and he was saying the other day, when he was in the choir, the head boy was 18... The head boy of Cantoris was 17. He said, we had three 16s and five 15s. They all knew their job, jolly well. I should have started that. He was yeah, probably so out of work, weren't they, as well? Look, their voices were free. Uh, they, uh, no, they, they didn't sound old, you know. And that was mm. a natural... You see, Luff recorded the last, the last recording. He was 16. Yes. 15, 15 and a half, and 16. What was the last recording he made? Uh, hear, I'll, I'll get hear my prayer, hear, yes. me, hear my prayer again. Yes, yes. yes. It, yes. it, it re-recorded um, a year after the first recording. Yes. But now they're breaking at 12. We've got some now going at 12, I regret to say. Yes. And it's very difficult to get a, a standard, particularly a solo standard, yes. of boys who are virtually still babies. Yes, this is the problem, because they don't have the adult head no, on their shoulders. No, they? no, that's quite true. You know, it's marvellous to have uh, been able to speak to you, and thank you for letting mm. us come in on what really is a bit of history, because to us, um, to me, I mean, I wasn't even born when that record was, was first made, and here we are unearthing a bit of history, and you've been kind enough to tell us about it. Thank you very much. No, I've been too delighted. Boy, 